Hello and welcome to this session in which we're going to be working with, within chapter 6. Uh, we started the session and the first thing we looked at is future value with multiple cash flow. Make sure you know how to do this. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be lost as we proceed further in this course. But this session we're going to be working with even a, mo a more important topic is the present value with multiple cash flow. So in the prior session, we looked at the future value with multiple cash flow, not the present value with multiple cash flow. In the, prior, in the prior chapter, we looked at present value. Let me just show you the difference between the two. This way, I want to make sure you understand this. In chapter five, what we did is we looked at present value of a, I'm going to cross this, single amount. Okay, this is what we looked at. So if you don't know how to do the single amount, you're going to be lost here. So make sure you know how to find, I can't erase this. <laughs> make sure you know how to find the present value of a single amount before you proceed into the present value of a multiple amount. And the present value of a single amount was covered in chapter five, which is the prior chapter. Okay, so what's going to happen is this is an important topic. We often need to determine the present value of a series of future cash flow. As with future value, there are two ways we can do it. We can either discount back one period at a time, or we can just calculate the present value individually, then add them up. So the same technique we used for the future value, we could either take each payment separately, or we could roll them over. We can do the same thing for the present value. And we're going to see how. Suppose you need $1,000 in one year, $2,000 in two years. Okay, on a timeline, here's what we're saying. You need $1,000 in one year. This is year one. In year two, you need $2,000. This is what you need. And you can invest today the money at 9%. So how much money you will need to invest today so you can take out $1,000 a year from now, $2,000 two years from now? This is this is. This is the present value of a multiple cash flow, not of a of one amount, of a multiple amount. So how can we do this? Let's think about it. What I need to do, I need to find out the present value of this $1,000, bring it back to the present. I need to find the present value of this $2,000 back to the present. Right, well, I know how to do this. I learned this in chapter five. I take my future value, which is one for the $1,000, divided by 1 plus 0 0.09 raised to the 1 power, because the $1,000, it's only for one period. So simply put, I'm going to take 1,000 divided by 1.09, that's equal to 1.09, and this is 917.43. So I find out how much I will need to put money for this $1,000. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the $2,000. For the $2,000, it's going to be invested at 1.09 raised to the second power. Remember, I'm going to need this money two years from now. So I'm going to have to find out what that factor is. 1.09 raised to the second power. That's 1.1881, and that's 2,000. So if I take 2,000 divided by 1.1881, that's 1,683, which is the answer right here. So how much will I need to put away today? I need to put away today $2,679. Now, the, before we proceed, I would like to show you this. I would like to show you the proof. Here's what we're saying. Today, you need to put away, based on our calculation, $2,679. So let's do this. So today, I'm going to put away... $2,679.79. What's going to happen is this. This money, it's going to grow, grow at 9%. So after a year, I'm going to have in, in this account, so I'm going to take this amount, multiply it by 1.09, and I'm going to have $2,834. Then I'm going to withdraw year one one thousand dollar okay so my balance when i start year two after i take out the one thousand dollar so this is year two balance sorry balance at um 
ending year one, ending year one, which is the beginning of year two. So after I, so I'm gonna have, let me just do the, okay, one more time. I started with 2,600. I let it sit for one year. It grew to 2,834. I took out a thousand. So at the end of the year, I have 1,834 dollars. Now again, this money is gonna grow at 9% in year two. 1.09 and I'm going to have exactly 2,000 and I'm going to take out exactly 2,000 and voila the answer is zero right the answer is zero so when I take 2,000 out the answer is zero so notice it did work exactly as we as our calculation suggested okay all right so here they give you the proof which is I did also gave you the proof okay Now, let's take a look at another example. Let's just make sure I capture everything. Okay, sorry, just give me a moment here. We'll look at another example to see how this works. Suppose we had an investment that was going to pay us $1,000 at the end of the year for the next five years. So here's on a timetable. We have an investment year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. It's going to give us 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, and 1,000. Now we need to find out, the, to find the present value, we can discount each 1,000 back separately and then add them up. So we want to find out how much we will pay for this investment. What's the present value of those $1,000? Well, what we have to do is take each $1,000 and discount it back to the present. So starting with this $1,000, I'm going to discount it at 1.06. Assuming here we're earning the interest rate is 6%. Interest rate is 6% for this exercise. So we're going to discount this $1,000. So it's going to be $1,000. This 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 five year, it's going to be discounted at 1.06 raised to the fifth power, and that's equal to $747.26. This $1,000, it's going to be discounted for four periods. So again, I'm going to take 1,000 divided by 1.06 raised to the fourth power, and that's going to be 792, 792. Then this $1,000, and this $1,000, then this $1,000. So again, I discount each one of them separately. And here's what I want you to see. Notice this $1,000, the five years, it's only worth $747. And this $1,000 that's gonna be this, that's gonna, I'm gonna be receiving a year from today, I'm gonna have to pay more for it, okay? So the $1,000 that I'm gonna be receiving five years from today, I'm gonna have to pay only 74% of it, or seven, $747, $747, which is approximately 75%, 74%. I have to pay only 74% of this 1,000 because my money is going to grow for five years. But this $1,000 here, I have to pay 94% of it, $943. So notice, hopefully you notice this. So all what I have to do is put away $4,212.37. And what I can do at the end of each year for the next five years, I can take out $1,000. Okay. Alternatively, we can discount the last cash flow one period that adds up the last cash flow. We can also do that as well. So I'll take 1,000 divided by 1.06 plus 1,000, which will give us 943 plus the $1,000. Okay. Now, also... Uh, uh, the process can repeat itself as necessary in figure 6-6. So we could do we could do this in a different way. Again, but this is really time consuming. And again, I want you to understand the concept because what's going to happen is we are going to use formulas, shortcuts. But here's how it works. First, we discount this $1,000 one period. It's 943. And then we're going to have $1,000 from year four. We're going to have 1943. Then we're going to discount this one period so discounting this one period means dividing it by 1.06, dividing it by 1.06. Then we're going to have an additional $1,000. We're going to discount this one. We're going to divide this one by 1.06. Then we're going to add $1,000. Discount this amount by 1.06. We're going to have this amount. Then we're going to add $1,000. Discount this amount by 1.06. 
again, we're going to end up to with $4,212. The reason I'm showing you both methods, I want you to understand what's going on. Again, you're going to have a shortcut of how to do the calculation, but make sure you understand what we are giving, okay, and how we're, we're trying to solve it. Let's look at another example. You are offered an investment that will pay $200 in one year, $400 next year, and $600 the next year, and $800 at the end of fourth year. So you're going to have four payments. So here's what the investment looks like. Year one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So the first thing is 200 then 400 then 600 then 800 obviously this is not properly scaled okay it's uh, you know writing with the pen on the computer is not easy let alone my handwriting is lousy so so this is what we have and this inv this investment is going to earn us 12 percent. so the question is how much you will pay for this investment so what's the present value of those future cash flow easy what I'm going to do, I'm going to take each one separately. I'm going to take the $200 and discount it at the present. And how many periods? Only one period. So I'm going to take the $200 divided by 1.12 raised to the first power. And that's going to be 178.57. And I'm going to take the, the $400. The $400, it's going to be discounted for two periods. And that's going to be 318.88. Then the $600, it's going to be discounted for three periods, 1.12 raised to the third power. And that's going to be 427. And obviously the 800 will be discounted for four periods. Add them all up and they will add up to $1,432.93. Now, if you're interested, you can use, you could do the same thing. Take the 1,432, whoops. Take the 1,432, let it grow at 12%, withdraw, let, let it grow at 12%, withdraw, and you will see it will work perfectly fine. So I would let you do the proof yourself if you're interested in the proof. Okay. Let's take a look at another example. How much is it worth? Okay, let's take a look at this. You are offered an investment that makes three $5,000 payment. The first payment will occur four years from today. The second payment will occur five years from today. And the third will occur six years from today. So be careful with these exercises. One, two, three, three, four, five, six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So. The first payment will occur four years from today. So this is the first payment. 5,000. Then 5,000. Then 5,000. This is what we are saying. So you're going to be getting the 5,000, but not now. It's going to be four years from today, five and six years from today. Okay. If you could earn 11%. Okay. What's the most investments? What's the most this investment is worth today. So how much will you pay today for such an investment that's going to pay you 5,000, 5,000, and 5,000 when it's going to be four years from now, five years from now, and six years from now? Well, how do I do this? Well, I can discount each 5,000 separately. I'll take the 5,000, find the present value of it, take this 5,000, find the present value, take this 5,000, and find the present value separately. Okay, we will answer this question in a reverse order to, to illustrate a point. So they want they want to do it in a reverse order. So let's take a look at it. So uh, the future cash flow in six years is five thousand times one point one two plus five thousand times one point eleven and plus five thousand. So what they're saying is this: they're finding the present value. So here's the way they're they're solving this problem. Let me just erase this present value concept. Here's what they're saying. What they're going to do, they're going to find, you remember, we're going to be, let me just erase all of this and do it right here. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first five thousand dollar would occur four years from now. Five thousand, five thousand, and five thousand. So what they're doing is this: they're saying, let's take this five thousand, let's take this five thousand, and find out how much it's worth in year four. Let's take this 5,000, see how much it's worth in year four. And obviously the 5,000 in year four is worth 5,000. So first they want to find out how much it's worth in year four. Then they're gonna take this year four and find the present value of it here. So let's find out. So this 5,000 in red, it's gonna be discounted for two periods. And here it's 11%. So it's one. So it's gonna be 5,000 times 1.11 raised to the raised to the second power. Sorry, they're going to do the opposite. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, it's 5,000, 5,000, sorry, and 5,000. And what they're going to do, they're going to take this 5,000, this 5,000 at year four, and they're going to find out how much it's worth in two years. So 5,000 times 1.1 raised to the second power they're going to take this blue five green five thousand and how much it's going to be worth in year six and five thousand in year six is exactly worth five thousand so this five thousand the first five thousand that's in red it's going to be worth six thousand one hundred sixty dollars and fifty cent the five thousand in green this five thousand it's going to be worth five thousand five hundred and fifty and the five thousand it's going to be worth five thousand now so at year six, we basically have $16,710.50. All what we have to do now is take this amount and find the present value for it. And this is what they did. So we'll take the $16,710.50 divided by, find the present value of 1.111 raised to the sixth power. So the investment is worth $8,934.12. Okay? Or... We could do it the way I showed you at the beginning. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have 5K, 5K, and 5K. And what I said is, find the present value of this 5K, find the present value of this 5K, find the present value of this 5K. And this is what they did here. First, this $5,000. It's going to be for four years. Find the present value of it, and it's worth $3,293.65. This second 5K, which is in red, it's going to be discounted for five years, and it's worth $2,967.26. And this $5,000, I'm going to make it in a different color, black. It's going to be discounted for six periods. And when I add them all up, they'll add up to the same amount as $8,934.12. So you could look at it in two different ways. You could find the present value, go forward, then move backward, or take each payment and discount it separately. So there's more than one way on doing this. Once you understand this, then it gets easier for you. But what, what, what to understand here is, remember, the payments are in the future. So there's no payment year one, year two, year three, and year four. So the first payment start in year, in year four. That's why you have to be careful on these problems. Being able to plot the problem on a time value. Now, obviously, you could solve this via a calculator. So you could use your calculator to find the answers, or you could use the spreadsheet to find the answers. Now we have to, again, make a note about the timing of cash flow. This is what I was just saying. The timing of cash flow is important. When do you get the money is extremely important in these, in these problems. Properly plotting your problem. If you don't know how to pro properly plot your problem, you will be in trouble. Okay? I'm working with present and future value problem. Cash flow timing is critically important. In almost all calculation, it's implicit, it implicitly assumed that the cash flow occur at the end of the period. So if you're not giving any specific information, you would always assume the cash flow is at the end of the period. So for example, we'll look at an illustration. In fact, all formulas we have discussed all numbers in a standard present value or future value and all 
preset setting on a financial calculator assume that cash flow occur at the end of each period unless you are explicitly told otherwise you should always assume that that's the case to illustrate suppose you are told a three-year investment has a first year cash flow of a hundred dollar second year cash flow of 200 and third year cash flow of 300 here's what you assume one year from today you will get the 100 two years from today you'll get the 200 and three years from today so notice at time zero at today there's nothing there's zero okay on our timeline notice that the first cash flow occur at the end of the first period the second cash flow at the end of the second period and the third cash flow at this at the end of the third period okay we will close this section by answering questions we pause at the beginning of the chapter regarding the baseball player so you could read this and find out you know it's interesting especially if you like baseball to figure out this exercise okay and this is basically what i'm going to go over in this session in the next session we're going to be working really within the same concept so this is multiple cash flow in the next session we're going to be working within the same concept except it's going to be we're going to be calling we're going to be introducing the idea of annuities and the ideas of perpetu perpetuities but it's working exactly the same concept discounting future cash flow but it's going to be a little bit easier because i'm going to start to show you the shortcut and the formulas of how to calculate the present value and the future value of annuities as well as something called perpetuities which we're going to be introducing in the next session if you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class.